This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Mirage 2000 CDTS module and we're looking at three different elements. If you like, three tutorials in one. Now, as you know, I am not the best Mirage pilot. We do have an extremely good Mirage pilot and teacher with us. Say hello, Cortana. How's it going? And I should say for time reference, this is early July 2021. So some of these things have changed recently. The first thing we're looking at is root desired. This is a feature that is going to allow us to approach a target on a particular course or from a certain azimuth. The second thing we're going to look at is waypoint offset the third thing we're going to look at is toss slash loft bombing so to break it into easy to follow chunks first we're looking at route desired we are currently starting at krimsk we're going to bomb the novo runway but we want to tell our route desired function that we want to attack it from a certain azimuth and that is going to be along the course of the runway obviously so first we need to know the radial of the runway and we're just going to cheat we're going to put a line down it and ask it is a true course of 222 degrees now the first thing to say is that the mirage will accept true bearings like that first thing we want to do is apply that route desired bearing to waypoint two waypoint two i should say is already set and already in the middle of that runway we're going to move to our pcn here we are going to first of all prep waypoint two Next, we're going to change the mode to RDTD. That is root desired, time desired. So we also have the function of doing time, but that's not going to be covered in today's video. What we've got here now at the top is the bearing or the course, the 222 that we're going to add in, and that would be the time up there. So let's add the true course of 222. So plus one to adjust these digits here. 222 zero decimal insert we've now applied a root desired 222 bearing or course to waypoint two next we're just going to do a test so we're going to set our destination as waypoint two ping next to our pca rd so to apply the root desired click rd like that what we should see now is two lines appear on our horizon line on our hud and you can see they are there also also if we look on our vtb we've also got waypoint two shown here as a cross and our rd lines here you can see if we turn it off ping back on there so for the time being cortana we're going to turn rd off right and go back to waypoint one correct let's arm our bombs up we're going to be attacking a runway so bombs instant uh we're going to fire 18 of them at a, a interval of 100 amp 40 meters. It's pulling up. Brakes in three, two, one. We're gonna uh, cruise to waypoint one first of all. All right, switching over to waypoint two. Launcher up. Increment into waypoint two. If I can find my button, there it is. Ping. I've selected route desired. Right, I'm on a little bit high, but let me get RD on. Now we want to do this before selecting the weapon, correct? Correct. And at this point, we want to put essentially our flight path marker, the little circle in the middle between the two RD lines. And there's going to be some fluctuation of where these lines are at very shortly, Cortana. Any explanation for that or it's just just how it is? Uh, it's just not wanting to line us up too quickly with the okay. target. Because uh, obviously we need to sort of, you know, displace in one direction or another to, to enable us to do so. Watch out. You can see it jumping about the screen value viewers. That is just how it works. You just have to work with it. Okay, what I can see now, Katana, is the cross for the waypoint and I'm between my RD points. Uh, so I'm happy that I'm coming in on the right radial, selecting the bombs. You can now see the RD indicator has disappeared. We've now got set up for bombing. Check our credentials. Armament's good. Fusing's good. I'm now going to do my weapon, weapon control system forward to get my symbology ready for the attack. Already got a video on the new bombing method of the CCIP if you want to and see that. I line my reticle up at the threshold of the runway. Back value viewers is our lovely new bingo warning. And fire! <laughs> there we go, formation bombing. I love it. Very good. Right, that is the end of RD. Anything to add Cortana? I think that pretty much covers it.
So let's add on to Root Desired, Waypoint Offset, and Tossed slash Loft Bombing. So, new mission, starting from Krimsk again. We're going to head to Waypoint 1, then we're going to head to Waypoint 2. Waypoint 2 is a known VFR location, and this is how it works in real life. So you must locate a location on the ground. We've done an air show cone just to make it super easy. In real life, you would use tower, a block of flats, a water feature, something like that. Next, the target offset from the known location is what we need to get. Our intel says that from there to our actual target, which is going to be about there, is 10.77 nautical miles with a bearing of 122 degrees true. Let's start on our PCN. First, we're going to set the route desired, which is going to be 122 degrees true, which is going to allow us to attack our IP at the correct angle or azimuth. Very important. So right click once on the parameter selected to RDTD as we did before. We're going to go plus one to adjust the azimuth. One, two, two, zero, enter. Next, we're going to add in the position of the target offset from the IP, i.e. from waypoint 2. We're going to use the bad parameter selectors for this, otherwise known as offset. We've got delta lat long method, or we've got the rho theta method. Rho theta means distance and bearing. And for either of them, we'll also have to have delta altitude, the change in altitude from waypoint two or the IP to the target. So we're going to add in our rho theta. So let's select that. This here is rho, that's our distance in nautical miles. This here is theta, that is our offset bearing. Let's adjust this here, one plus 10.77 nautical miles, insert. Next, plus three to adjust the beta here, the bearing, and that's going to be one, two, two, zero. One, two, two degrees true. So, next, delta altitude, change in altitude from IP, plus or minus. There is feet, there is meters, and from the F10 map, I won't do it now, but just trust me, it's plus 65 feet. We're going to go feet, which is here, plus one. We're going to go plus, because it's plus, plus. We're going to go 0, 0, 0, 6, 5, insert. With plus 65 feet, plus 20 meters. That's our bad symbology added. And purely of interest, we know that we can enter true headings because if we go to this command here, I've got English copy obviously, it's telling us here that it's already compensating for a magnetic variation here of 7.1 degrees. Next very quickly set the weapon up so i want at least one bomb to drop we're going to drop um large laser guided bombs we're going to make sure we've got an instant fuse selected there i'm going to turn my master arm on now so i don't forget i'm going to quickly check my root desired is functioning so if i go root desired there i am going to just want to correct waypoint so next waypoint you can see that is waypoint two and that is our root desired approach to it. Okay Cortana, that is us ready to go. Do not select the weapon until we tell you to. Please set the lead. Roger, we're going to navigate to waypoint one, value viewers, uh, and then we will report back. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and select waypoint two. Two. And enabling route desired. Route desired. Okay, so the same objective as before. We're going to put the FPM between the two lines to align ourselves correctly onto target and on the correct course. Regards speed valued viewers, generally we want to keep fast. We want to keep our momentum high because the faster we're going, the further we can loft the bomb. If we're going low like this, we can loft about up to five miles, maybe six miles. If we're going high, we can loft much further, obviously. When we get within 10 miles, we'll see the cross of the waypoint. There we go. I'm just gonna get into a position where we can uh, see our VFR point. We can now see our VFR IP, which is that cone there. The procedure now is to turn off RD. We're going to select our laser guided bomb, in this case the EL4. When presented, we are going to click on, on the top right of the PCA, PI. We will then press, as you know, weapon system command forward to get our CCRP symbology up. We will be presented with a diamond. We will then fly close to the VFR point, And when we're A, close, and B, when the diamond is perfectly on our VFR IP position, we will press Magic Slave AG Designate INS Position Update. The reason we do that is because our INS waypoint is simply not accurate enough for this type of bombing. Hence, where you must find a VFR location 
to manually update the INS system. So it's something you just have to do. Once we've done that, we'll report back with the next phase. Are you ready, Cortana? Ready. And pause. So, RD's coming off. Bomb's coming on. PI is coming on. Weapon system command forwards on. Whoops, forgot to turn my radar on. Stupid me. Obviously, you must have your radar on, on for this to work. Radar is now on. Get close to the VFR point. You can see that the INS waypoint is simply not perfectly on that cone, so it's not accurate. And that's normal for any aircraft that does not have INS GPS integration. Preparing to press Magic Slay. And press. Right, I am now going burners on and I'm going 600 knots. What we've got is the CTRP guidance wings, for lack of a better word. It's that wing there, right wing, and it's that wing, the left wing. All we have to do is to keep those wings as level as possible with our flight path marker wings there and there, and that is guiding us in terms of azimuth. When we get close enough to the target, a timing cue will start rising from the bottom of the HUD and rising up. When we see that timing cue rising, we're going to press and hold weapon fire. We're going to pull aft on the stick, not too hard. You'll see roughly how hard we need to pull. The timing cue will continue rising. When it rises past the FBM here, the bomb will drop. As far as we're concerned, that's it. We turn around, we chaff, we flare, and we get the heck out of there. Full power. Like I said before, valued viewers, within reason, go as fast as you can. That means you'll get the bomb to toss as far as you can, and that will keep you out of danger as much as possible. You know, it's not really worth doing this at 400 knots because you'd have to get within two miles. You can do this at any altitude, but realistically, you would want to do this low for tactical reasons. This is a method that is used in history a lot. Only for my timing cue. Initiating my pull-up. Timing cue, initiating my pull-up. Bomb away. Pressing and holding weapon fire. Try and keep it straight with the wings. Bomb away. Turn around and uh, I'm just going to leave the jet there. Here you go, our bombs. Probably more or less in formation. There they are. Oh no, that's a, that's a mirage. If we can catch the laser. That is one dead, uh, whatever that is. Navy fulcrum. Navy flanker. Boom. Two targets taken out, I think, there. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, major thank you to Cortana. There is no way that myself and RC could work this Mirage stuff out. Uh, go and do some toss bombing with Root, Desire, and Waypoint Officer.